Hey guys, this is Rod, and as you might already know, Mineplex was suddenly shut down on May 16th, 2023, after roughly 10 years of being online. This server has been a cornerstone of multiplayer Minecraft for years, providing countless hours of fun and excitement for players all around the world, me included. In fact, back in the days, I used to spend a lot of time playing mini games such as Block Hunt, Castle Siege, Ship Snake, and many others. And oh man, what a roller coaster it's been in the past few days. Within just 10 days of the shutdown, Twitter user Samito and announced his acquirement of the server and the intent of bringing it back to life. As of today, Mineplex is still offline, so I decided to bring back a very small piece of the server. I spent 13 hours coding the famous Ship Snake minigame in vanilla Minecraft in its entirety, so let's dive into the video. Since I want you guys to be able to import this minigame in your world without even downloading anything, I actually had to start with a crafting recipe for the minigame. After doing a bit of coding, I decided to create this item named Soul of Mineplex, which can be crafted with these items here on the screen, and then by combining the Soul of Mineplex with a redstone block and a white wool block, you'll be able to create this spawn egg that will generate the entire minigame. Alright, so I want the arena to be a round arena, it has to be very big. Okay, I like what I see. That's exactly how big the arena has to be. Alright, I very much like what I see here. Now let's add some more details to it. Let's make the arena have a couple of walls. Now I just have to do a little bit of tinkering so I get the exact result that I want. Okay, for the moment I think that I want the walls to be just like those. Now let's start with the retexturing of the floor of this arena. Alright, we start having something. It's not exactly what I want, it's not the final result. I don't really like this block palette, so I think that I'm gonna change it and use something else. So let's see what result we get with this palette. Okay, let's see the final result. And yeah, I think that this is exactly what I want my arena to look like. Now let's start adding the obstacles which were present in the original minigame inside the arena. So the first idea that came in my mind was to add some miniatures of sheep inside the arena using normal full blocks, but I didn't really like the effect. So at the end I decided to use uh, item displays with custom player heads. Yeah, they just do the job very well. Let's start creating the lobby. So since this minigame can be played by 16 different players at the same time, I want to make this lobby big enough to contain 16 people in it. I also want this lobby to be above the arena, so players in the lobby will be able to see the other players uh, play while they wait. In the lobby I also added a couple of colored sheep, and when players right click on them they'll be able to select the different game kits, and they'll be able to start the game and also leave the lobby. Okay, now I'll have to write the code that will allow players to start the game. I want these players to be a different color every time that they play, so I want to give them a random color every time. I am going to add 16 different starting points in the map. Okay, let's test the command, let's see if the points are correctly placed. And yes, we get all of the blocks placed every 22.5 degrees, so I'm happy with the result. Now let's change the set block command with a summon command. Okay, let's see if everything worked as we wanted. Let's generate a new arena and it should generate the 16 different entities and yes, I can see them. The problem is that they are facing the same direction. I want them to face the center of the arena. Okay, let's see if everything works fine. So the arena is generating. Now it should generate the 16 different entities and yes, they are facing the center of the arena just like that. Look how nicely they are placed. They actually look like the numbers on a clock, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, very nice looking. So what I've done so far was actually very simple stuff. Now I have to create the actual snake mechanic. So at first I wanted to make it exactly as it was on the Mineplex minigame, but uh, to replicate that effect of the ship following each other, I would have needed so many commands and for this creation here, I can't use so many commands because as I said, I want this creation to be a one command creation. So I had to use a simpler method. I used a very simple method where I summon a ship every few uh, game ticks. So when players run around, they will keep summoning ship on their position. Well, this is uh, not exactly what I wanted to get. Okay, and with just a snap of a finger, I'll create the entire snake mechanic. Are you guys ready? 
Perfect. Yeah, well, maybe there's too many sheep, but this is the effect that I want to get. Right, now I'm going to summon some less sheep, right? Because I don't want the arena to be overcrowded with entities. This is not right. I need to have maybe a little bit more sheep. So I get a realistic snake effect. Mm, nope, this is still not good. Yeah, now we're in business, baby. Okay, that's the effect that I wanted to have, but I don't like the way they are dying. Okay, yes, that's exactly what I wanted. Now we, we are starting to get to the final snake result. I like what I have on the screen right now. Let's add some snake food in the arena. In the original minigame, you had those slimes summoned randomly in the arena. So I am gonna replicate the same effect. I went with the block display variant because they don't cause a lot of lag. They don't have collision and also I can decide how big I want them to be. So that's a huge plus for the block display entities. Every time I press this button, one of those slime entities is going to be summoned and then another command is going to spread it around the arena, right? So if I use this repeating command block, I'm going to do it quicker. I'm going to spawn a lot more of those entities. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do that so I can visualize exactly where they are placed. I like what I see. Some of them are placed outside the arena. I'll have to add some code that brings those stray entities back into the arena. Yeah, maybe there's too many of them, so I'll uh, spawn them less frequently. Okay, now the last things that I have to do is add some very nice sound effects, particles when the snakes eat those uh, slimes. And I also have to make those slimes actually functional. So when the snakes eat those, they will grow. Now, let's see if I've done it correctly. Okay, very nice. I'm using the totem of undying particles. They do the job perfectly for what I have here. So this means that we almost finished coding this mini game. I'll also add some progressive snake growth. I want the snakes to grow not only when they eat, but also every maybe four seconds. All right, yes, I think that we can carry on with the uh, kit items. Okay, so in the original mini game, there were two different kits. We had the Super Snake Kit and the Speedy Snake Kit. And uh, you know what, guys? I let Jordan from nine years ago explain it. I've also got the, the power up here, which makes me invincible for a few seconds. So if I'm inevitably gonna run into... Oh, 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 there you go. There's an example for you. There's also a Speedy Snake power up as well. Uh, but that just makes you go faster. And I feel like that provides a greater chance of you dying. All right, I'm going to use the item and as you've seen guys, I was invulnerable for three seconds. Let's carry on with the last part of this mini game, which is the speedy snake kit. Okay, let's see if it works. I selected the speedy snake. So when a player uses this special item, uh, they'll be able to run a lot faster for a couple of seconds. So I'm very happy with the results. That's how you code the Mineplex snake mini game in Minecraft. Of course, guys, it was a lot more difficult than what you've seen on the screen. Remember that you'll find all of the codes that I've made on my website, which will be linked in the description of this video. There you'll also find a video tutorial on how to import this creation into your world. Guys, I'm actually trying to revive this channel, so your subscription and likes will definitely help me produce more content like this. And before going, check out this other video that I've made. There you'll find some pretty interesting stuff.